Welcome back to New Day Northwest. We are three years into the COVID pandemic and researchers have now learned that inflammation appears to be the cause of some long COVID symptoms. Dr. Elizabeth Ray is part of the UW research team that's been looking into all of this and she joins me now. Thank you for being here. Yes, thank you for having me. Well, this is important research. We've seen so many effects of COVID in so many ways, but we are dealing with something novel, right? I mean, that was what it was called, yes. the novel coronavirus. So before we get into the study itself, let's talk about COVID and what are some conditions of long COVID? Yes, so long COVID is this newer condition that we're finding in the population where they essentially have persistent effects that last much longer after a lot of your common symptoms have resolved. Mm -hmm. So this usually occurs up to four weeks after you've been diagnosed with COVID. Um, after your cough and congestion has really resolved, people are still having issues with memory impairments mm -hmm. or this brain fog where you can't quite think straight and we're not really sure what's going on. And so that's what the study was about. You know, and this is not something that people would automatically connect because COVID is a respiratory virus for the most part. Not many people think, hey, it's affecting my brain. Yeah, yeah, it's really interesting. So there's this lung brain interface, this interaction between these two organs, mm -hmm. and they essentially communicate like a train system does. Mm -hmm. So some of our collaborators are in Portland, we're in Seattle. If you were to get on a train in Portland, you would end up in Seattle. Right. So if we think of the lung being in Portland and the brain being in Seattle, there's now this train uh, track that gets you there and then the train station that regulates who gets in who gets out right. and so that's the blood-brain barrier that protects the brain from mm -hmm. all of these interactions um, and so this blood-brain barrier really regulates what gets into the brain and so the lung can release inflammatory markers mm -hmm. that are able to cross into the brain and have a brain effect they can act on this blood-brain barrier and disrupt it and get other markers into the brain that can affect brain function. Or the virus itself, as we've shown, can enter the brain and have detrimental effects So how brain. is this S1, the spike protein, getting into the brain? How is it getting past that blood-brain barrier? Yeah, so it recognizes this uh, protein that's at the blood-brain barrier, and it's basically taken up by these cells and transported across the blood-brain barrier to then enter the brain and then it can infect cells once it's in the brain to cause this inflammation that we're seeing. Because it's sneaky. It's basically sneaking in, yeah. So uh, the spike protein, uh, which is present on the surface of mm -hmm. the virus, in the pictures it's usually this red, um, kind of angry looking molecule mm -hmm. that that looks like a spike and it's basically the key to its entry into the brain and so that's what's allowing it to get there. And so once it's there that's what's causing the fogginess because it's truly in the blood. Yes. Um, you used mice to study this S1 protein. Um, let's talk a little bit about that and some of the mice when it got into their brain, it caused that same inflammation we're seeing in humans. Yeah, so just like it can infect the lungs and cause inflammation there, mm -hmm. we found that it can actually get into the brain. The spike protein uh, that's present on that surface of the virus can get into the brain and infect cells there, and we think that's what's causing this neuroinflammation, the inflammation in the brain, which causes that brain fog. So. When you were looking at these mice, did you see the inflammation go away on its own? What, what were you seeing? Yeah, so we studied these mice for one day or four days mm -hmm. after they had this S1 protein in the brain, and we saw that inflammation was there after one day. So just one day of being in the brain mm -hmm. caused inflammation, and it lasted up to four days. That was the longest we studied these mice, so mm -hmm. we would need to do follow-up studies to determine how quickly it can resolve. Yeah. And just like humans, mice are are different and so uh, depending on which mouse model you study you may get a different mm -hmm. effect with how long it lasts in the brain. Right and just to give an idea is that when you're studying mice it's a much faster time scale. It's yes. kind of like humans sped up right? Exactly so mice have a much shorter lifespan so we can study them um, in these shorter time frames. And get an idea of what happens long term which we still don't know yet but how can this knowledge um, 
help people and does the vaccine fit into it at all? Yeah, so this knowledge tells us that neuroinflammation is associated with COVID infection. And so if someone's infected with COVID and has this neuroinflammatory response, mm -hmm. then it's likely due to neuroinflammation. So if we can begin to target that neuroinflammation, then mm -hmm. we can begin to resolve this long-term COVID effects. Um, and the vaccine we know protects people from even getting COVID. Right. And so if you can prevent from getting COVID in the first place, then you're not going to develop this neuroinflammation. It's also been shown to reduce the symptoms associated with COVID. So you have a less severe reaction to it if you've right. had the vaccine. And so um, if this response isn't as strong, then um, you're not gonna have as much as neuroinflammation. Much. Many spike proteins floating around, sneaking their way in, in your the, brain. In your brain, yeah. So we can keep them from getting into the brain in the first place. Thank you so much for taking the time from yeah. your busy, important work that you do to come down here and talk to us about this. Sure we'll be thing. checking with you again soon, I hope. Sounds great. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. All right.